Hey Brewers, welcome back. This is Fuff F***ed Up Fridays. And I am your host, making a toast. Be rad. Cheers. Ah, gotta love that cream school baby. So, we did that yeast video the other day where I asked if my yeast choices were basic and uh, we got a lot of responses. Thank you for that. Seems like a lot of folks are kind of on the same page as me, which is good. I don't want to be behind the eight ball. I mean, I'm still going to try out some new stuff because that's kind of what we do around here, but uh, I want to do more yeast stuff. So, we're going to do a shootout of our two favorite yeasts for fermenting lagers at room temperature without doing any of that fancy pressure fermenting stuff. I've been using 3470, uh, that's Saf Lager from Fermentis. 3470, that's Wyan Stefan or Wyan Stepan. 3470 from the Wyan Stepan Institute, which I believe is in Germany. And then we have our Lalamond Nova Lager, relatively new one. It's a dollar more in the store than the 3470. And I've used them both, but never in a true side by side. I don't know which one I like better. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this Festa Brew Continental Pills. And if I can't tell, I'm gonna actually brew something. So these Festa kits are pretty darn good. So what we're gonna do, we know this is the same wort, it's gonna come out of the same bag. We're gonna put it into two of our three gallon for monsters. Now, if you've ever used a Monster before, I actually figured out this trick just this afternoon. See how, like this is a brand new fermenter, so I just put that O-ring in there. See how it's a little sketchy in there? It's kind of hard to get them in. And then you go to put it on, it falls out. So, trick is, first time, before you put stuff in it, take it, I'm gonna spill a little bit of star sand here, but that's okay. Put it down like so. Put that in there, screw it in. And that's gonna force, force our O-ring to go where we want it to go and stay there. Boom, minty fresh. So, we've already star sanded all our equipment here. I've never tried to pour one of these super heavy bags half and half, so that might be kind of fun. That's like literally the only complaint about these Festa kits is like, yeah, it's great, you don't have to add any water, it's just wort in a bag, can pour it and go. But, six gallons of wort is somewhat unwieldy. And when I say somewhat, I mean very. Often if you're using a knife, try not to stab the bag. Very important. Come on, Mel. There we go. See what I'm talking about here? So they give you S23, which in my experience, at room temperature is gonna be a sulfur bomb from hell, like rotten egg city. So let me know if you've used this yeast at room temperature with this kit, how it turned out. Like yes, a pills is supposed to have a little bit of a sulfur note to it, oh, check pills anyway. However, I used this on a Maybach that I like fully lagered years ago and it took me three months to age that sulfur bomb scent out. So if you're having better luck with it, let me know, maybe I fucked up. Stands to reason. I do fuck up from time to time. So we're not gonna use that one today. Today is about the Nova Lager and the W3470, okay? So, one thing we have, we got our handy dandy cap removal tool. Now you think, Brad, it's just a cap. How hard can it be? Pretty fucking hard, actually. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna give this a good spritz. I'm gonna give that a good spritz. And, okay, let's get ready here. This is gonna be fun. At least we've got the big wide mouth on our For Monster three gallons. So that is gonna help us big time. I guess I could use a funnel. Someone's like, does Brad know what a funnel is? I'm aware what they are. <laughs> I just don't use them very much for some reason. It's just another thing to sanitize, another tool. And uh, I got the pipes so I can hopefully handle this. And uh, something tells me that because I said that, this is gonna turn into a disaster. Ugh. This is always a stressful moment. And now it's all wet with star sand, so that's adding another level of difficulty. Okay, all right, yeah. And yet we're aerating the wort a little bit, not a problem. Our yeast is gonna like a little bit of oxygen, help us ferment. Yeah, I'm gonna stop about there, let that foam settle out. All right, that wasn't so bad. Getting used to this over the years. All 
Okay, so we're gonna give that just a sec, settle out, and then we'll top them up to our three gallons. Might take a minute or two. Whew. Handled it like a pro. All right, yeah, we'll give these a minute to settle out. We're gonna top them up the rest of our work. We're gonna pitch our yeast, and then we'll see you in two weeks for the old flavor test. I'm probably not gonna bother showing you the transfer, Oh, maybe I will. We're gonna use our uh, Oxbar eight liter kegs to transfer. I'm really loving those things. They're very versatile. They're nice and small. You can take them places. They don't take up a lot of space. You can use them in a regular fridge. We just love that invention. And I mean, they're cheap, 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 cheap. Like you can buy three of those, which is 24 liters. So enough for a full batch of these for less than the price of a used ball lock keg or even a used pin lock keg. So, so got some cool options there. My one complaint about them is I seem to have a hard time making the dip tube, like the floating dip tube actually f***ing stay on. Yeah, I connected. <laughs> uh, maybe someone can give me a little advice on how to do that. Cause that's, that's been a challenge. Like you even saw Paul drop it off onto the floor there and like he's pretty freaking pro, but yet he somehow still f that one up. See, even Paul f***s up. We all f*** up. Relax and have a homebrew. Thank you, Charlie, our Lord and savior. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Patience is not my virtue. Yeah, that's right. I saw you drop down when I said that. Okay, so our foam's gone down just enough that I'm gonna can top these up. But while I was waiting, I saw this. Look at that. See that dark stuff? I don't know if that's something from packaging or if that is mold. Now, if it's mold, these are probably gonna be infected. But my mantra is and see what happens. So at least what I'm gonna do is spray this up with some star sin, give that a wipe. Can't imagine this is a good thing, but let's just hope and pray we're doing this at room temperature that our 3470 and our lager take over before the mold does. That is a possible thing that can happen. Um, Well, let's wait and see. Worst case, I'm out of Festa kit and we'll have to do this uh, experiment again. But, let's see. There ain't no going back now. So, what did we learn? Look at the fucking spout and make sure it's all good before you start pouring it, asshole. And then we're gonna have to wait for these foamies to go down again so we can, you know, like normally, you know, you stick your finger in there and the foam goes down. We're not gonna be doing that today, obviously. Although, now who fucking cares, I suppose. But... All right, we got a tiny little bit left behind, but I do want some, uh, I do want some headroom in there for our fermentation. And uh, another thing to point out about these for monsters, just like the big ones, you can do the single stage fermentation and then transfer right into your bottles. I'm obviously gonna be using kegs, but you can take one of these spigots, drill a hole right here, and boom, spigot. Be cool if these things could do pressure, then you could actually do like an old school cask kind of deal and carve it up and serve it like that. But uh, no dice. So, okay, we're once again gonna wait for our foamies to go down a little bit here. You know what? We've already fucked this up enough. We're gonna wait, we're gonna get our foamies to go down, we're gonna pitch this yeast, and uh, get past this dumpster fire. Um, <laughs> hopefully she still turns out. It all depends who wins. Let's get this going. And at room temperature, they will fire up quicker than they normally would with a lager strain. Plus we are doing, cause this is a half batch. One pack is a double pitch for this. So there is still hope. There is hope. And uh, like I say, our mantra here, grain to glass is pitch it, see what happens. It's not gonna kill me even if it could be the worst tasting diaper bomb ever, but it's still beer technically. It'll still have the desired effect. And you know, I do believe that uh, all of us brewers should have to suffer through a keg of shit beer because they fucked up. It's a rite of passage. Unfortunately, I've made this right a couple of times already. So, uh, you know, uh, we'll see you in a few minutes. We'll pitch this yeast and then we'll see you next. Uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks for the sampling. All right, I told you I was impatient. This is actually kind of working and it's doing both at the same time. Look at that. So our foam has settled out enough we can pitch. So we'll start with our, actually, we're gonna start by star sanding our scissors. And give it the old snipperoo. Nova lager. 
Close that up. Spray our again. Close that one up. Man, you stinks. Airlock. One down, and we just sprayed this guy, so we're good. Oh yeah, almost didn't pitch a second pack of yeast. Wow, this is a easy kit that uh, somehow I'm turning into a very difficult situation. Big surprise, big surprise. Once again, stainless steel table. There's a 3470. I'm gonna grab some tape and tape these to the actual side of it so I don't mess that up too. There we go. So, what is supposed to be 3470 versus Nova Lager may have turned into mold versus yeast. We'll have to wait a couple weeks and see. I'll know as soon as I crack them to transfer them to the keg. So uh, this may be a mulligan, might have to redo that one. But when in doubt, ferment it. We'll see in a couple weeks for the sampling or the dumping. Um, one or the two. I will, however, drink a pint of shit beer as a punishment if I need to. See you in a couple weeks. All right, folks, I'm catching this on day two. That is some crazy fermentation. I've already cleaned the airlock twice, and look at that sucker go. My money, unfortunately is on that this is infected. But we bought the ticket. We gonna take the ride. Two weeks later. All right, brewers, we're back. Moment of truth. <laughs> we're gonna see what won, mold or yeast. And then if yeast won, which yeast wins? 3470 or Nova Lager for our room temperature fermented on the floor of the bathroom Festa brew. I've kind of cleaned off the crusties. I don't know if you saw this thing. These things just went volcanic on me, which kind of leads me towards infection. But they did finish off in a reasonable amount of time, and like they are done. They've dropped somewhat clear. So these are all, I really don't know what's gonna happen here. I really don't, so let's just crack it and have a smell. If it smells like a lager, we'll know. If it's super infected, I'm gonna know right away. So. One smells delish, f***ing right. Now the next one. Smells perfect, and I mean, this smells really good, like for kit beer, like this, this smells legit. You know what, f*** the all grain brew, I'm just gonna do moldy kits from now. <laughs> all right, so we're gonna get, uh, actually, you know, I forgot to grab it, but we're gonna get, we're gonna get, what are we gonna get? A gravity reading, that's what we're gonna get. So I'm just gonna grab it, I'm just gonna give it the old spritz. I sanitized my hydrometer already. Hydrometers. So get those in there. And like, if you're confident, and also if you can get them out. So we're gonna take the lids off. If you know you can get them out and you're confident that your hydrometers are sanitized, you can just drop them right into the fermenter, which is what I prefer to do. Oh, come on. All right. We need the handy dandy tool. Is it here? Oh, is this it? Look at that. I'm gonna try not to get no chunks in there. Oh, there we go. Worth the five bucks or whatever. If you're into the for monsters. There we go. Try not to drop any chunks in there. Cause this smells, this actually smells amazing. Was this, I think this was the Continental Pills, which makes a solid option for this experiment. All right, no chunks. A little sticky, a little sticky. Sometimes I wonder if this is why I have dry skin. Again, stainless steel table, but what's an extra spritz, you know what I mean? One challenge with this is it makes it a little hard to get, really see what your reading is. So we're looking at, we got down to 1.004, but it is a light beer. 
We're not down below 1.0, so again, good sign that we didn't get infected. Same thing, 1.004 at room temperature for both. So we yank those out of there. Now, what I probably should have done, if this was an IPA, this would be very bad to leave this open like this, but a nice little lager, it's not gonna hurt it. Let us prep our siphon and our ox bar eight liter kegs. So I forgot to mention that we're gonna be using these guys today. We're gonna fill them right up and we're gonna set up two on our little mini 360 regulator. Love this thing. Get that on our soda stream bottle. You can also use these with the mini the mini CO2 cartridges, like the ones you would use for a BB gun or a paintball gun. Uh, I just wanna make sure you get that food grade CO2 though. Uh, first things first, we got our mini easy siphon. We carry these over a grain of glass. Of course we do. Toss that. Getting a little crowded around these parts. So, pro tip, when you're putting this in here, it's a little bit dry. You wanna be a gentleman about it, okay? Plus we need to star sand it anyway, cause sure it's brand new, but we don't know what could have happened during packaging, during maybe somebody didn't wash their hands, gross. So we put our little trub beton thingy on there. Okay, so see how it has these four things in there? Can you see that, Travis? So we wanna line those up with the corners, not, not with the corners. There we go. Cause otherwise it's just gonna fall off. Yeah. Sucker in there, we're gonna sanitize our hose, which again, fresh off the wall. Your vinyl tubing is probably like the hardest thing to keep clean. Like in a pro brewery, they're using their stuff every day. So it's always, you know, it's always used. It's never really getting dry. Those of us who only brew sometimes, these hoses can get pretty crusty. We don't like that. So like, if you have an infection in your home brewery, 99% it's this, I'm telling you. Just replace this. And I like to use the 7 16 hose on the 3 8 barb so I don't get that little air bubble, but it sure makes it hard to get it on here. Don't make me pull out my lighter now. Yeah, I find if you use the actual 3 8 hose, you get a little air bubble right there. It's just constantly breathing, as we all know. Oxygen post fermentation is not our friend. So I'm gonna come around here. And as you can see, don't fear the bubbles. Actually, I'm gonna dump a little bit more. Don't fear les bulles. Get that in there, transfer it to the bottom. And then while it's transferring, we're gonna to put together our fancy, fancy cap for the ox bar. Okay, boom, hopefully this doesn't fall over on me. You know, Kegland or somebody out there, we need like a little stand to keep these things upright while we're, while they're empty. All right, so, okay. While we're doing that, let's get the, thank God for sanitizer. We got our two carb caps, beverage and gas. We got our little elbow thingy. Thankfully I already have one built, otherwise I would forget how this is done. Our hose, we got all the hose. We have to cut our fingers off. There we go. Not really the right tool for this, but this tool's gonna figure it out. Huh, <laughs> you know, I could have just done that. Fridays. So we have three gallons each. We're only gonna get two gallons each in this one. Maybe I'll grab a third and we'll just do a mixture. Blend? We've never done a blend here on Puff before. Maybe there's, there we go. All right, garbage. Okay, now's the fun part. We start doing this, and we don't want to have this overflow on us while we're doing that. So, oh look, they got some little like little. This is the new ones, and they've got a little bit of weight in here, so it doesn't. It's gonna sink a bit better for us. I like that. Good job, Kegland. We already dodged a bullet on uh, infection on this one, so we really don't want to f this up. All right, so we're just gonna go by. So see that? We're gonna make that happen again. Can I do this first? Cause that would be way easier. 
Yeah, sweet. Oh, yeah, but if you do that, it might not go the way you end up the way you want it. Yeah, close enough. Now we get our pressure relief valve. And when we're getting close on this first one. Okay. Spray up our... I'm also going to cut these ends straight. I don't know what's with the angle cut, but I don't like it. It's going pretty slow. Hopefully it get in there. It did. It did equalize. I'm a fucking scientist. Okay. All right, well, it didn't quite equalize. So we're gonna stop that. I'll just put it in the next one for now. I seem to remember I had this problem last time. <laughs> Fat fingers. Now my hands are all slippery. Spoon handle. Oh, now I've done it. And this doesn't want to come up. Fun, fun, fun. Wouldn't be fucked up Friday if I didn't fuck something up, would it? All right, let's try this one more time before I lose my shit. Ha <laughs> ha, there we go. Mmm, got you. All right, it looks like it's actually gonna stay for us this time. Much good. Let's straighten that out just a little bit. And we'll give it all another spray down. Get that on there. Boom, nice and tight. Now, take off our, keep it nice and sciencey. All right, one down. Luckily, we've already got this sucker built, but I'm actually gonna take it apart because I've had a realization here. Gotta love those treated floors. See what I'm talking about here? Kegland, get your shit together. Boom. All right, so I'm gonna actually pull this one apart because I realized something. We had a bit of a problem getting this to stick last time and I noticed one side is longer than the other. So we're gonna put the short side on here and you have the long side to hold our tube. Let's try that. Seriously, my hands aren't that big. So if you got big hands, you might have a problem with this. So we cut that straight. Obviously, if you don't have treated floors, do this over the sink. All right, and then we're gonna put that down. We'll spray it again when we're ready to use it up. And while that's transferring, we're gonna make our single regulator, single Mini 360 into a dual, not dual pressure, but dual, out, dual output, yeah. So, man, I love these quick connects. All I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna squeeze it like so. Give it a twist, come on, and out it pops. So give those, give these guys a little spritz as well. This guy too. Oh, and I'm actually one piece of tubing short. Silly goose. So, we go in. These things are non-directional, so like I can go in here, come out there, whatever, whatever. So I'm just gonna go in the middle. Boom. Second one outside. And we'll just go cut another one real quick. Got my little stash of tubing here, among other things. We're not the best at organization here at Grain to Glass, if I'm being completely honest. And like, what if there's a bit of star sign in my line? Well, it's just gonna push in there. Who gives a shit? And there we have it. We still got a little bit of time while it's transferring, so let's get it on to our... Oh, oh yeah, right, that's how that works. Let's 
get it on here. It's right into our soda stream bottle. Lock it up and then we turn this guy on the top to press the little beton inside of our CO2 tank. So that is now open and this thing is sitting at way too high. We're gonna wanna carbonate at about, shit, that's even too high. Little bit tough to read these suckers. 12, I want about 13 PSI, there we go. All right, we are now adequately prepared. Yeah, we definitely need like some little feats, little feats for all this stuff, keep it upright. High center of gravity. No, you gotta be low center of gravity. Any second now we're gonna be ready. This timed out pretty well. Assemble all this stuff just while we're transferring. Like you gotta love when things just time out. And then, you know, next time, all we have to do is pull it apart real quick, give it a good spray. Like if you do that right after you're done the keg, as opposed to letting it get all gross and dry, then all you have to do is star sand it. You know, give it a good warm rinse, star sand it, bam. You don't have to soak it and do all that, fun, all that stuff. You let it get all dry and crusty, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to do that. Bring this down here. Oh. It died. It died on me. There we go. Get our last little bit in there. Boom. Oh, a little bit over full on that one. Oh well. Just means more beer for me. And put our tape on there so we know which one's going to win. Well, we don't know which one's going to win, but without this, we won't know what we're doing. All right, and then we just hook these suckers up. Boom. Boom. Give it a little purge. Get our oxygen out of the headspace. And there we have it. This smells amazing. Like, I'm, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to bother with the blend because honestly, <laughs> It's, they're, they're so freaking similar. I'm not gonna bother with the blend, but I am gonna have a little sippy poo. Oh, that hit me right in the back of the throat. Ugh. Oh man, for kit beer, this is gonna be fucking awesome, guys. Mm. Never thought I'd wanna get drunk on flat kit beer, but. Uh... All right. I'm trying not to get too fucked up here. We're gonna throw these in the fridge and we'll see you for the sampling. Hit that like and subscribe. Don't get too fucked up in the meantime. We'll see you soon. Two weeks later. All right, Fuffers, it's time to try our 3470 versus Nova Lager versus the blend of those two. But remember, this is the main experiment here. So a uh, little bonus for it. A little you. bonus, yeah. Plus, so we were gonna throw that word away. Come on now. Yeah. Six gallon kit. Well, I mean, I was gonna, like, I mean, it all fermented, and then I was like, ah, I'll just package these two, and then I was looking at the gallon, uh, just... This much beer, that we're not... I could have, th no I, almost, we're I almost threw away that much beer, like that... If anything, I, we'd I, give I, it to Noah I, as a consolation prize for <laughs> the other video. No matter what, this will be better than the Bubba Keg beer, <laughs> absolutely guaranteed. We don't know for sure, but at least it's the right color. So... Um, these were all fermented at room temperature? Room temperature. And under pressure? Under... No, no, just room temperature. Just room temperature, just room okay. temperature in our uh, one of these suckers right here. Our three gallon for Monster. Okay. And so, so you can't ferment under pressure. Uh, not if you don't want beer <laughs> everywhere um, and no beer in your mouth. Okay. Uh, and room pre room temperature. What do we figure? It's probably around 17, 18 Celsius. So far from lager temperatures, but not crazy. Indeed, but that's what I love about this 3470 and this Nova Lager. I fermented, like I don't even bother fermenting these at lager temps anymore. And I don't worry about pressure. Gotta love those yeasts. If you like a lager and you don't want the fridge, you don't want to spend your money on a firmzilla, pick one of these and you're fucking golden. Let's give them a rip. We already poured them. We got this fancy new Nuka Tap Mini here. Doing a video on that soon yep. or maybe before this video. I don't know how it's gonna work out. <laughs> yeah, depending on uh, our time machine. Either uh, way, it's yeah. still cool. <laughs> Either way, they're cool, they're little. You can mount it right on there, no hoses. So let's start with 3470. There we go. Oh, that, by the way, this is the Festa Brew 
Continental Pills, so I didn't even bother to do a brew day. I just did a wort kit. I mean, you saw me sucking on the straw when we were packaging this, so I'm pretty into it. it smells. It smells nice. Smells real nice. Nice, nice lager there. Damn. That's pretty nice. I yeah. don't get like any esters or anything you'd expect from something fermented at that temperature range. That's that pretty not happening here, that. but you gotta love the Festas. I just wish they didn't weigh as much as they do, but 23 <laughs> liters of beer weighs what it weighs, right? Well, if you're a customer, one at a time is not too bad when you get two pallets of them. Keeps uh, us in shape, I suppose, or in a shape. Pear, <laughs> anyway. is, a, pear is a shape. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious, I wanna, I wanna try yeah. the Nova Lager kind of okay. side by side here. I get like more nose off this one, but I don't know if it's if I like it. Definitely smells different for sure. I get like a sweetness that I don't I don't get off of the 34. Yeah, like this one's kind of more malty. This one's a little more. And they were side by side, know. same room, right? So, like literally, literally touching. Okay. It's not bad, but. It's like, doesn't have as dry a finish. It seems a bit sweeter to me. Well, and it seems like honestly a little bit thinner, which is, I mean, they finished at the same gravity. Hmm. The 3470 has a bit of a, a bitterness to it that I would expect from like a lager like this. And I don't get that bitterness on the Nova Lager. So some people might prefer the Nova Lager for that reason, but for Indeed. my particular taste. Well, and this is kind of odd because when I've used this for like IPLs and some like when I've done it on Skull's Light, I feel like I had the reverse opinion. So, I mean, I wasn't really expecting them to be vastly different. And to um, me, this is pretty noticeably different, I'd say. Going from one to the other, especially. I have, I crushed a Camden tablet before and like all I can smell <laughs> is Camden tablet. It'll stay on your hand for a long time. So we have gloves that we never use. Never we use. have seven pairs of brewery gloves. We're constantly burning ourselves. A handful of PBW. Okay, well now may as well get get the blend. Get the blend. How does it? <laughs> I get way less. Like there's less nose. Like yeah. That. Weird. So we do these things, you know, for science. And it tastes totally different. This is my least favorite version. Indeed. <laughs> and remember now, same word. Yeah. I and I literally pulled half of this out of this fermenter, half of it out of this fermenter. Or, well, these are not, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of the Fermonsters. Yeah, out of the Fermonsters. Who would have thought that two pretty good tasting beers put together doesn't taste that good? All right, I'm gonna try not to get too fucked up here. I'm gonna throw these in the fridge. It's like it has the bitterness from the first one, but also the sweetness from the second one or something. Yeah. That is strange. Either way, these are all passable beers. Like, I would pass this one to you. Oh, no, I would keep these. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, both of these are good. I prefer the 3470. That's just my palate. It seems like it has a drier finish, which yeah, is dry what finish, I like. And I feel like I'm a getting a little bit, like this. little bit more malt flavor out of, out of the 3470 somehow. But uh, I got to say, if you're like, I should have done one with the S23 that comes with it, just for just to add another layer of complexity to this. We, but uh, We have the means to do this. Indeed. <laughs> but I generally brew this. Is, and the other thing is, uh, they didn't get infected. Remember that black stuff that was all over the lip of the bag that I poured through? Uh, through some miracle, that did not affect this at all because this is nice and clean. We didn't get the, really the clarity I was after, but I don't know if that's, if maybe if you've brewed a Festa Continental Pills before, did you get brilliant clarity? Because like obviously we're not brewing, we're not adding World Flock. I don't think I put Biofine in there. That's here. what I was gonna ask that you put any clarifier, but either way, it tastes good. Either way, yeah. And these so, have been cold for like a while, right? It's not like yeah, these have been sitting in the fridge for a couple of weeks. Yeah, like so they should have like settled one. out. Yeah. I think just some biofine or gelatin in the keg would have probably Ooh. done the trick. But uh, whatever, it doesn't affect the flavor. It tastes good. So I got to say, for this experiment, 3470 is the winner. 
Um, dang though, like I just I can't get over how nice this is just being a work kit. Yeah. Like they get I was a, just they get a bad rap. You that know? for summertime I'm just gonna make one of those. <laughs> Just to have on deck. Yeah, for the everybody beer. Bucks like, for six gallons. And takes, like, literally brew day is three minutes. Yeah. Gotta love that. Clean and sanitize your pail or whatever. And or don't. It. Like, mold, you know. <laughs> 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 well, I'm sorry I don't have a definitive answer as to which one I'd say is better. I mean, today, today, I would say I'm going to still stick with my, my favorite 3470 that I rock for many things. But... Uh, don't discount that Nova Lager. I've really enjoyed it on some other things. I'm really enjoying it today, but uh, Wyan Steppen is the king today. Yeah, I'd agree. The Fura. But like you said, <laughs> the Nova Lager, I've done a bunch of IPLs that turned out really good, but I didn't do them side by side with 3470. Indeed. So kind of, I think I need to test that out. It's like <laughs> every experiment I do seems to raise more questions than gives answers. However, Another successful brew. Mm -hmm. Gotta love that. I'm gonna try something uh, in the next video that's gonna be sound pretty gross and possibly turn out pretty gross. So maybe we'll get a fail here. So stay tuned. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see whatever the f he's gonna brew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you never know with this guy. Cheers. Don't get too fed up now.